Well, and on the flip side, so you came here when you were, what, three? Three and a half. So um, from that degree, we, we I've learned a little bit. I see we're always learning. I'm always yeah. learning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think Oriental is a very old term now. I don't hear that. But Asian is the best way to describe But then even in, in your world, it's a whole different variety of Asian. Asian is the most convenient. Yeah. Because Asia as a continent, it's encompasses over 40% of the world population. There's mm -hmm. over a dozen, dozen different countries. So, you know, if you want to be particular, you want to say East Asian, South Asian, that's in its own category. But Asian is like a more, I guess, broad term that they adapted back in 65, instead of calling people Oriental going forward as a more of a friendly way to go forward in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because before that, the word Oriental was just so much negative connotation and a lot of pain and misery behind that word. Because for example, in American legislation, the only time where a particular ethnicity was banned by law in the United States from coming was the Chinese Exclusion Act. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The entire bill was for the word Oriental. So it's that kind of label that reminds people that yeah. kind of pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So in 65, they decided to use the word Asian and we have to sit down. And I know like more, I guess, socially aware people also say, oh, there's East Asian, South Asian, so forth, so far. But like for convenience sake, Asian is definitely the word to describe. I guess people from Asian ethnicities. <laughs> Jimmy, so kind of talking, it was funny, we were talking to get to know each other a little bit. To, to think that your name is Jimmy, to me right away, I'm like, well, it may, may not his real name, maybe like Chip is a nickname. And so Jimmy's not your real name. Yeah, I think I speak for most Asians of, you know, East Asian, South Asian and so forth, is that uh, coming to like a Western nation, you gotta have a nickname. Because your name will be not impossible to pronounce for, especially English speakers. Because for example, East Asian, um, at least from what I've, I mean, at least in East Asia, the surname comes first because your family name always comes first, and then your uh, first and middle name is part of your first name essentially. So you know all that comp complexities. Growing up, especially for me, like even from elementary school, middle school, high school, almost every teacher always like asking me like how you pronounce this, and they mispronounce it over and over, and I say like, just go by Jimmy, much easier. So do you do that to preempt what you know is coming, just to make exactly. your life simpler, or is it to I'm not have that. people? <laughs> discriminate against you or a combination of both? Just make life easier for all make life parties. Easier. Right. Because the, uh, constantly correcting and, you know, making sure I'm pronounced correctly. I don't expect anyone to be fluent in Chinese. So I was like, you know what, just go by Jimmy. That's and, fine. And, and so what percentage of Asians would you think change their names then? Not near 100, I imagine. Nearly yeah. yeah. um, 100% of people change. Yeah. But I come from a particular area. I'm from, I'm come from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And we really, really like Western culture. Yeah. So even them not coming to America, even Hong Kong and Hong Kong, like they even had <laughs> English nicknames. Cause in, really, in Hong Kong. Yeah, because we really admire Western culture a lot. So yeah. it's not, so you, you kind of embrace it because you're liking the Western culture. So it's so what name will I be? Yeah, the, the city <laughs> I come from is a very unique place because yeah. it was a British colony in 1997. Yeah. So um, a lot of, well, this is politically controversial, but a lot of people in the city they prefer to stay in Western mm -hmm. influence. But let's just say that if your city is 7.5 million compared to a, a country 1.4 billion, wow. you don't really have the right to say what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So China, is really taking back the control and uh, with that alongside the Western influence. So for starters, they prefer to speak less English and more Mandarin going forward. So they, don't, they teach less and less of that at school now. Wow. So um, we are still trying to cling on to our Western past with the, our British colony status, but uh, it's kind of getting erased day by day. I, I, I wanted to throw it to Pia, but I want to come back to you too real quick. So how about, is Pia your real name? Well, it is my real name, okay. and, but it's my second name. Um, and Hispanics, we have uh, four names, and we use them all. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have your first name. My first name is Maria, uh -huh. and then my middle name is Pia, and I have two last names. Um, well, now that I'm married, I have you know my husband's last name and my first last name. But you usually use your, your family last name or your father's last name first, Contreras, and then your mother's last name, Barriga. Mm -hmm. So we have four. So you invented hyphenated last names way before we did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you know I go by Pia. Usually, usually Hispanics are go by the se their second name, uh -huh. and and I decided to go by Pia because there's so many Marias. Mm -hmm. All the Hispanic ladies are Marias. So. <laughs> <laughs> very very common. Well, I, I didn't want to leave this conversation without having something is unfortunately a topic right now that is the rise of increase in Asian violence right now. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to, to know kind of what you may or may not have experienced here in Fredericksburg or how that impacts you or your family. What would you say to that? 
fortunately, we did not experience, me or my media family, experience any like direct violence. We always get subtle things every now and then, but we're so used to it. Mm -hmm. We kind of don't blink an eye anymore. So fortunately, we have not experienced any direct violence in Pittsburgh. Um, people here have always been pretty friendly, to be honest. It looks? Yeah, we always get like, every looks every now and then. Um, but nothing like direct violence that we've been seeing across the nation lately. Because yeah. I think the last time we checked, those was probably 7,500 cases since last year in yeah. direct hate crime against Asians. So that's reported. So let's, let's, let's assume that underreported is even much higher than that. So yeah, there has been a skyrocket of cases, but uh, from what, what I'm aware, most of those cases are in big cities or centered around mm -hmm. big cities. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, like small town, like towns like Fredsburg or rural, more uh, suburban areas, yeah. has experienced it less. And Fredsburg has been pretty friendly, in my my experience. Yeah, that, that's good. To, that's really good to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, now let's bring it back to real estate a little bit. Yeah. So. So what I really, well, I have a question. Um, because one thing I do want to talk about for you, though, is what is, I want you to say something about the importance of talking about the Hispanic culture and bringing awareness mm -hmm. to the Latino community here. And I also want, we can wrap this up with, uh, bring this into real estate, because the Hispanic community is very important mm -hmm. to construction here. Yes. <laughs> in Fredericksburg and really anywhere, because when you go to construction sites now, that's, mainly what you see. Yes. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, that'd be awesome. Yes, well, um, you're right. Um, and, and you know, we always try to um, promote a home ownership. And, um, and, you know, people in construction, they make good money. Yeah. So they can afford houses. Mm -hmm. um, now, the houses that they, they buy usually are thinking about um, the size of the houses where their children can continue living. So there's here. a difference in it's maybe what a Hispanic buyer might be looking for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So don't offer them like a Rambler, no basement. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna work. Okay. Now uh, they always, you know, looking uh, or you know to have a second like an income um, uh, property as well. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind that a lot of people are like we we said before um, have their immediate family here, but they have the rest of the family it's in their country and they're sending money to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So really, the hundred percent of their income is not going to, you know, just stay here. Yeah, and I think keeping things raw on us. Sometimes there is that perception that there might be, you know, many people living in a house, but that may be true in a Hispanic family because they, they're right. the way they approach their family and the way they live is very different yes. than maybe we do. Yes, exactly, and and they like to live in community, and yes. and you know, in in our countries, um, to own a home, it's it's very difficult. I mean, you know, down payments are huge, and really what you see, the people that are coming here are, are people that are in need um, um, from their country. Mm -hmm. They usually don't live in a house, you know, um, they're, they're sharing the, the house that their parents sometime, you know, ago um, were able to buy. So, um, so that is in their culture. It's not that they want to, you know, just make a hotel out of a house, right. which I've heard a lot, you know, yeah. from, from, you know, comments or, or neighbors. Right. Um, it's really because, you know, it's, they're trying to help each other. Right. That's, that's their, that, right. that's their, the spirit mm -hmm. of, uh, you know. And I, and I know that to be true because I, I've been working for, for a few years with some um, clients from Afghanistan mm -hmm. and, and, and I know one particular brother he invited his brother, even though the loan and the house was in his name and his wife's name, he had to have a split for you because he said, my, my wife and I and our children will live upstairs mm -hmm. and my brother and his wife will live downstairs. Mm -hmm. And he said, he will help me pay the rent, but in the meantime, we're going to be saving money for him to buy a house in a few years. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of them do that. I've, I've had, I think, four, four clients who have done the same thing so that all of them can save money yeah. so the next person can buy a house mm -hmm. and then a few years later it'll be someone else. So Jimmy, we know that home ownership is really, really important in the Asian community. So give us some some, some tidbits on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely a market accomplishment. It's really value high up there alongside, I guess, academic achievement. Um, and at least, especially the older generation, home ownership is pretty much priority number one. Um, it's really important and it's similar to what you just described. It's more of a communal base too. Mm -hmm. So let's say my, it's like, let's say we got a house and then my media family needs to help too. And then we all, they all work together, they all save up and then they all support each other. 
And, and I, I think they may have more specific requirements. I, I, I know of what feng shui, I haven't really experienced mm -hmm. that when mm -hmm. I'm showing properties, but that is a thing, it's a real thing. It's important. Yeah, the older generation for yeah. sure, right. but the younger generation I is becoming less and less so. And yeah. also depends on which region, uh, East Asian, so it's East Asian is Korea, Japan, and China, right? Mm -hmm. So they care a bit more because more in integrated in the culture. While South Asians, like let's say like Thailand, Malaysia, or, or Philippines, like I think they'll care a little bit less because not integrated in the culture. Because mm -hmm. Montreal originally or, originated from China, and East Asian cultures like Korea or Japan had more of an influence from Chinese culture than South Asians. So to answer your question, I guess more elaborate details than you expected. It's East Asian, older generation, cares about the particulars. Mm -hmm. And it's, in the end of the day, like, it's a symmetry. Mm -hmm. It's a symmetry, but like, it's just in more of elaborate terms. And it, I guess any human b brain prefers symmetry mm -hmm. over asymmetry. So feng shui is just a complicated art form of promoting symmetry most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, and it, it, so it's interesting to see the different cultures. And I think the association has a lot of people that are in our membership. And that's what this is all about. And I think we are evolving, we are growing as an association as we're talking today and stuff. But we're not perfect. Probably never will be perfect. We've got a lot to, to grow. Um, I just want to talk to you maybe some tangible things that you're still seeing where we need some growth or whatnot. I know for you guys, have, have any of you guys done a refinance on your house? No. Not lately. But okay, well then let me ask you a question. If you did, do you think you'd be taking your pictures down off the wall? Your family no, pictures? That, do you think I you would? Okay. I, I will tell you, for years, I refused to tell my clients, and, and I have to tell you, most of my clients were members of my church or friends. I hardly ever went outside of that. And so the majority of my clients were black, and I never asked my clients to take their pictures down because when I went to everybody else's listings, they had pictures from their Confederate grand, grandfather all the way down the wall. I mean, millions of pictures, and they were up. But then I would go to a house that I knew black people lived in and every single picture was gone. And it was interesting to me because I knew some of those listing agents and I knew what they had told blacks to remove their pictures. So I wouldn't do it for a very long time. But then yeah. I heard about that study in uh, Florida where this black lady was married to a white guy and the house, an appraiser came to the house. Well, the appraisal was low and they were very shocked to see that appraisal. So then they ended up taking all the pictures down and only left pictures up of the white side of the family. Yeah. And they had another appraiser go in and the house appraised for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars higher. It, it's, and that's a real tangible thing. We think we've moved on, but there's still ways to go. And I mentioned refinance in particular because I had, with, with their permission, I had some gay friends that were doing a refinance and they actually, as a habit, when they have stuff like that going on, they will actually research when they know who the appraiser is going to be. Mm -hmm. And they go to their social media profile and kind of found out they were quite conservative and mm -hmm. did not want that to impact their value. So mm -hmm. they did take their pictures down. So it, it, you know, it does impact people. And how about you guys when you were saying, if you were saying to an Asian or, or Hispanic but, uh, seller, would you recommend they take their pictures down? Uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's again, the awareness. You know, sometimes I just have to, I mean, it's, you can't live all, all the time thinking, okay, I'm going to do this because, you know, I can be discriminated or, you know, mm -hmm. it just, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's an you know, How about you, Jimmy? From Is that something with any of your brain? Um, I personally believe that every minority have experienced a different type of struggles, mm -hmm. depending on which kind of minority you are. Mm -hmm. And Asian Americans, I mean, there's a reason why there's such a common catchphrase of modern minority. Mm -hmm. And Asians, especially East Asians, we usually don't experience the same struggles as, let's say, you know, right. other minorities. So nine out of ten times, um, no. Yeah. Um, especially if it's like you're dealing with a lot of Caucasians because I feel like they were just like, oh cool, yeah. I'm sure this house is kept up then. Yeah. Um, and and it, the relation is vice versa. Not only do um, I feel like the minority Caucasians kind of prefer Asians, mm -hmm. Asians also kind of prefer Caucasians. So uh, if anyone's ever wondering, like if you have a Asian buyer or seller and you want to curious or want to be their client, if you're Caucasian, there is almost no problem. They actually prefer you, yeah. or you're Asian. They prefer Asian first and then Caucasian, and then let's just say, especially uh, the other ethnicity, they probably don't prefer that as much. And um, people are surprised when I say this, but 
East Asians in particular, and especially the older generation, they're very, very conservative. Yeah. Just to make that, to say that lightly. Yeah. yeah. You I know, was thinking about the, the question, and then I'm start thinking, okay, I will have to tell my clients to do more than remove pictures. Because, I mean, everything will tell them, you yeah, know, that they're Hispanic. Hispanic. Yeah. I mean, from decoration, the food, from the, the color, the smell when you go in, so, <laughs> yeah. Every time there is a lot of color. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Every time that I, I, I go into my, you know, my clients that are from El Salvador, their houses are blue, or light blue. It's yeah. the color of their flag. Yeah. And they like it. Yeah. And then, you know, you have to respect that, so. Well, so I'll, well, you know, pictures down, it, it won't hurt. Well, help it, my people. Th this is, this is, uh, I mean, I just love our conversation but you know and and that's funny that you say that because that was the first thing that I'm thinking about because I know a particular house that's really blue and pink and I and I love it but I absolutely knew when it was blue and pink that Hispanics had moved there but I love it and, the, and it's, it's a the choice mine. right it's a choice but Jimmy what you said is very interesting because I've known that for a long time that Asians and well I know that whites love agents because they think that that every agent is smart mm -hmm, yeah. um, and uh, we've we've heard that over and over again I heard it growing up and then on the flip side I've heard how Asians really respect whites and they don't care too much about uh, Hispanics and they don't care about blacks. and when I say don't care I'm like when you're talking in a totem pole that's kind of like the way that that they are but you know in life like I don't have an issue with Jimmy. I would never have an issue with Jimmy because he's Asian. And I would hope that in real estate that all of us would be like a melting pot. And we're all, now I, if, if, I don't care. If, that, if my client likes that blue and pink house, then I'm going to show that blue and pink house. Well, and, and bringing it back around, the, the magic of the diversity committee is honestly just being able to, without hesitation, have these conversations. And they are little things that we are making strides. We are making differences. Mm -hmm. I know being Pride Month right now, I've been totally impressed with the number of uh, realtors that have changed the frames on yes, their Facebook. Yes. And it, uh, yeah, the gay ones, but I've seen so many of my straight friends also do it. And that really means the world to me to see that kind of stuff. And companies are doing it as well. And so it is important for us all to kind of play in the sand same sandbox, sandbox and get along together. well. Um, and I think we have like one last question before we wrap things up. Yes, the last question is, why do you think it's important that our leadership and the committee at FAR be diverse and inclusive? Starting because here. you want to see yourself represented. You want to see yourself at the table. Yeah, yeah at the table. I mean, do you care if you don't, you know, if you are uh, black and you just see on the board just white people? Yeah. Would you participate? Would you, be, you know, feel like this is your home too? Yeah. That's true. Jimmy, why is it important? I think it goes back to what I said earlier, where far should represent, you know, the community of Fresbury and the community demographics and as a whole, Fresbury as Virginia into the country and it is unarguable that the momentum is becoming more and more diverse country going mm -hmm. forward. I mean Asian American I mean Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority and second half of fastest growing minorities uh, South America. And I feel like you can either follow the momentum and embrace the embrace the reality yeah. or you fight it and you just forget got forgotten about history. Right. You know, like same thing in sixty eight, same thing as now. And you know, with the people that I'm embracing and accept what's you know what's true and good, but the people that I can remember in history. Well, and that's that's why we're trying to do things like the Faces of the Far Scholarship. So we're not just talking, we're not doing tokenism. We're actually providing means because sometimes when you first get started in leadership, it's expensive to go to a committee or something yeah. or to a yeah. convention. And so we put a thousand dollar scholarship out there so that now they can actually go to a committee, learn, get involved. And I think once you go to do something like that, there's a much greater chance you actually will go forward with right. that or encourage other people you know to, to get join. more involved as well. Well, and not only that, uh, you know, we didn't always have a diversity committee at our. We just started this a little over a year ago. Um, thank goodness our current president at the time, Drew Fristo, thought it was a great idea. And um, so we talked about it for months before we actually had our first meeting. And I think that by us being so forward with this, that we have really shown, not just here in Fredericksburg, but even on the state level, we yeah. have shown people how important it is that we are diverse, inclusive, and that we are looking at the equity of everybody. So, you know, there are people on the state level who are looking at what FAR is doing because there are many associations in Virginia who, who do not have a diversity committee. So I just think that once again, as usual, that FAR has stepped up and we have this diversity committee and we are trying to make sure that we are 
inviting to everybody. We don't want anybody to feel like they're not a part of FAR. Is there anything we left off the table here that you guys wanted to talk about today? No, I think that we have covered it all. Okay. How about you, Jimmy? No, I just want to say thank you for you guys are doing. Well, yes. we want to thank you yes. because FAR and Fredericksburg, I believe they're about love. Yes. And I think we're growing, we're evolving, we're changing. Discussions like this matter, they're important. Yes. And I think through that, I think we will become a stronger association. And I'll tell you one thing. So Chip, I love Chip. We, you know, we <laughs> have this relationship. But I will tell you that we started this because he came one day to talk to me. He wanted to dialogue just about wanting to know more and more about, the black, about some issues yeah. that he didn't know about. And so for me, I think that's what we're doing today is all about. There are so many people who will see this video and will want to know more about the Hispanic community or the gay community or the Asian community or the black community. And all four of us are open and willing to yes. discuss it. Yes. So we're an open book. We want any and everybody to know, to, to answer any questions. And anything we don't know the answer to, we'll find it. Well, so this has been awesome. Episode one, yes. face to face. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you.